Hey y'all, Coach in the File here, talking about tabernacles and how a rapture will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I'm going to try to make this video as concise as possible, but we do have a lot of information to cover as I prove to you that a rapture will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. I guarantee it. I mean, we already understand the importance of the Feast of Tabernacles. For instance, we see over here in the book called Second Extras, chapter 2, how we receive our seals during the Lord's Feast. A lot of you guys are wondering about the seals that's talked about over there in the book of Revelation, particularly about the 144,000 and how they are sealed in their forehead. You see that over there in the book of Revelation in chapter 7. Well, we learn in 2nd Esdras that we actually receive that sealing during the Lord's Feast. And even for those of us who don't recognize ourselves as being part of the 144,000, the Feast of Tabernacles is still yet important when it comes to our health. Because when you look over there in the book of Zechariah and chapter 14, we see that it is through the Feast of Tabernacles and the observance of that day that we are prevented from getting the plague. We see that in verse 18 of Zechariah and chapter 14. It says it pretty plainly in that verse that if you keep not the Feast of Tabernacles, you are subject to the plague. The Feast of Tabernacles is extremely important for us to keep every year. But anyway, let's go on because in this video, we're talking about a rapture that is to occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, let me show you what I mean. When we're looking over here at MiriamWebster.com, which is from one of the most popular dictionaries in the world. Well, in the Merriam-Webster, we see that there are actually a few definitions of the word rapture. And we're going to take these in order as they're listed here. And we're going to talk about how one, if not all of these events will involve a rapture just for those who are paying particularly close attention you see that they're saying that there are actually two definitions of the word rapture one as a noun that you'll see here which has three different definitions of the word included in it and then you have the word rapture as a verb which simply means to be raptured but we're going to focus more on what that actually means here by drilling down in on the definition of the word rapture used as a noun. Now, like I said, we're going to take these in order. Let me go ahead and read those off for those who aren't reading along on the screen. Definition one says an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Definition two has two parts. Part A says a state or an experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. Part B says a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. And definition three says the final assumption of Christians into heaven during the end time, according to Christian theology. Now, like I said, we're going to look at these in order. So first of all, let's look at definition one, an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Now, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video how not everybody will experience a rapture during the Feast of Tabernacles. A lot of people is actually going to be left out and they're not going to be raptured at all during the Feast of Tabernacles. But like I said at the beginning, I guarantee that a rapture will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. And as we're looking into the first definition of the word rapture which is an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion we can see over here in the book of Leviticus and chapter 23 verses 39 through 44 that this will happen like we said we'll get into the other definitions here after this one but let me quickly show you how this ecstasy or passion will take place during tabernacles you see that talked about in verse 40 
of Leviticus 23. Let me read it for you. It says, And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You see that word rejoice there? Tabernacles is the most joyous, holy festival of the year. This is the celebration festival for seven days. These individuals are going to be walking around in ecstasy and passion. This will be a rapture moment for a lot of individuals. I myself will be caught up in this type of rapture during the Feast of Tabernacles as my family and I will be singing, we will be being merry, we will be joyous, we will be rejoicing, and we will be caught up in ecstasy and passion during that week-long festival. Alright, so let's look at definition two of the word rapture as used as a noun. It says a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. And part B says a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. All right. So let's take these two sub definitions separately and see how a rapture will occur during tabernacles. So what is a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion? And how will this occur during tabernacles? There are many of you guys whom the Feast of Tabernacles will be the first time that you've actually kept the Feast of Tabernacles. And as we learned about over there in the book of Esdras, we are sealed at the Lord's Feast. So some of you will get this sealing during this time. Well, you can imagine during this festival, there's going to be a lot of individuals whose relationship with our father will be substantially improved. In other words, they're going to get closer to our father during the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, let me show you something over here from the Third Testament of the Bible, which you can find a link to in the description of this video, both a PDF version that you can download to your computer, as well as an audio book that you can listen to over on YouTube. Let me drop you down to chapter 2 and verse 5 and read something for you. It says, Do you remember that cloud in which my disciples saw me ascend the last time that I manifested myself to them? In truth, it was written that I would come again in a cloud, and this I have fulfilled. This is actually talking about the return of the Messiah. Now, of course, there are those who it would only take catastrophic apocalyptical events like earthquakes and meteor showers who will realize that the Messiah has returned. But there are many who during the Feast of Tabernacles who are receiving that seal that we get during the feast days will come to realize during that week that our father has actually returned that the Messiah has actually returned you see in verse 6 it says I did not arrive as a man but rather spiritually contained in a ray of light to dwell within human understanding he is talking about that small still voice that we hear that comes from our conscience that many people will realize during the Feast of Tabernacles is our father dwelling inside of them and they will come to communion with that voice and will understand that that which we call the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is actually our father dwelling inside of our heart. It should be really easy to imagine when that person realizes that our father is with them and they can communicate with him through the spirit that that person will enter a state or experience of being carried away by emotion. I know I was when it happened to me the first time. I remember that day very clearly. All I could do was lay on the floor and cry and say thank you. Thank you. 
thank you. I probably said it a thousand times. Thank you. I was carried away by overwhelming emotion. And there will be a lot of people during the Feast of Tabernacles who will be carried away by overwhelming emotion. There are a lot of people during the Feast of Sukkot that will be raptured. But let's go on to the second part of this definition. It says a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. This is yet another way in which many people will be raptured during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I don't necessarily believe that the Great Awakening will happen during the Feast of Tabernacles. Like I said before, my watch date for that event is on the Feast of Hanukkah of the year 2020. But I believe that many people will be raptured in this type of way to a lesser degree. For evidence of that, let me jump you over to the book of Malachi chapter 4 verses 4 through 6. This is the last chapter of the Old Testament. In the last book of the Old Testament, and we're looking at the last few verses of the Old Testament, and it is actually talking about the Elijah spirit. If you haven't done so already, I would advise that you go study the Elijah spirit because this is a key player in the end times. Just like Moses was in the first era. And the Messiah, Yehoshua HaMashiach, was in the second era. Elijah is one of, if not the key players in the third era. That time that we are entering now, because of what it says here, is that our father will send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming and the great dreadful day of the Lord. It is this Elijah the prophet or the coveted angel that our father will send before the great and dreadful day of the Lord to do what? To actually help us to survive the tribulation. But you see up there in verse 4 that it is necessary that we remember the law of Moses the servant in order to have this indwelling of the Elijah spirit. This is actually talking about the book of the covenant or the book of the law, which was given to Moses or Mount Horeb. You see this first talked about over in the book of Exodus chapter 23, which is the last chapter of the book of the covenant, which started in Exodus chapter 20. That's four chapters that we call the book of the law. Well, it is in chapter 23 that he talks about sending an angel to keep us in the way. This is talking about the Elijah spirit. It is that angel that's actually going to help lead us into the promised land that you see talked about down there in verses 22, 23 and 24. Well, when you come up to verses 14 and 15, you see him talking about three feasts that we are to keep unto the Lord each year and one of which as you see there in verse 16 is talking about the feast of harvest or the feast of end gathering which is the feast of tabernacles so per this definition which is a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things I submit to you that there are many individuals throughout the world who this will be their first time celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. Their first time being obedient to the book of the law will be the first time that they realize a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. A lot of people will come in contact with the Elijah spirit, that covenant angel, by being obedient to these feast days and being the first time they are obedient to these feast days will be the first time that they will receive this mystical experience. And understanding that our father speaks to us through intuition, 
our conscious and through our dreams, their spirit will be exalted to a knowledge of divine things. In other words, these individuals will be raptured during the week of tabernacles. But now let's go on to the third and final definition of the word rapture, which is a final assumption of Christians into heaven during the end times, according to Christian theology. Now, to understand how this rapture event could take place during the Feast of Tabernacles, we have to come over to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. And we're going to jump all the way down here to verse 51, which says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In chapter 12 of the book of Daniel, you can actually see what's actually taking place during this blessing that we are to receive. It starts off talking about how Michael shall stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Well, we've done videos before making a correlation between this archangel Michael and Elijah. These, I believe, are the very same angels. They're the very same individuals. Michael and Elijah are the same. Well, we can deduce from what we read at the end of this chapter and what we're reading at the beginning of this chapter that it is Michael that's actually going to stand up. But look at verse 2. It says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is talking about the great awakening that will not only affect those people who are alive, like we're going to see over here in 1 Thessalonians and the rest of 1 Corinthians. But this is talking about actually those people who will be affected in the spirit world. What this is talking about is a change that is actually going to occur in the hearts and the minds of humanity. They call it the great awakening. You see in verse 3 it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of forever and ever. Well, when you come back over to 1 Corinthians, it's talking about how we are going to be changed. It says, we shall all be changed. Now, let's add this to what we see over in the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 4, verse 16. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first this too is talking about Michael or is talking about Elijah when it's talking about this archangel but notice that it says that this archangel will descend then it goes on and says that the dead in Christ shall rise first so you have the archangel who is descending to where we're at and you have the dead who are rising to where we're at. In other words, they're both coming to us. So when you read in verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It's easy to understand that he's talking about the spiritual clouds. What he's actually talking about is what we saw over there in 1 Corinthians when he's talking about how we will be changed. We will be changed into spiritual individuals where we are materialistic today. We will be spiritualistic individuals after this change has taken place. And it is there we will meet with the Lord. In other words, we would be raptured. And as this definition states over here, it is during this time that we will make this final assumption of Christians into heaven during the end times. And so we're understanding that this heaven that he's talking about is not a physical place that you can see when you look up into the sky. 
or that you can build a huge tower to try to reach like they did back there in the days of Nimrod or a place that you can get on a spaceship and try to reach like the Anunnakis are doing. But it is actually a spiritual place. And so we can see that this final assumption could take place during the Feast of Tabernacles 2020. And even if it does not, we see from the other definitions of the word that a rapture will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. One way or the other, somebody's going to get raptured. Let's just hope that it is one of you. If you've gotten something out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And Shalom.